What's up, everybody? Back with another study here in the book of Mark. We're in the series called The Gospels. Hallelujah. We're in chapter 12 of the book of Mark. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us, and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away, and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. He will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And let's go ahead and get into chapter 12 of the book of Mark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I normally, God normally leaves me, you know, so much going on. And actually, matter of fact, let me say this. I don't know if y'all saw about the, there's a satanic parade down in Brazil. They had uh, somebody with a pitchfork dressed as Satan, dragging Jesus through the streets and a bunch of other satanic stuff. The next day, major floods hit Brazil. Major floods. Like like cars being like almost completely over overtaken, being pulled by the water and you know, God ain't playing around. God God ain't the one to mess with. We need to fear God and serve him with all our heart. Now let's do this study. Chapter 12 of the book of Mark. And he began to speak to, to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a vet under the wine press and built a tower and rented it out to vine growers and went on a journey. So the vineyard, the Bible says the vineyard is the, it's the house of Israel. Put a wall around it. And dug a vet under the wine press and built a tower. The towers, that's a temple. The wine press, you know, wine represents doctrine. What represents uh, the word of God represents the new wine generally is the gospel. And rented it out to vine growers. Those who those uh, are the people of God, more specifically, I, I believe the priests. The, the people who are supposed to watch over the vine, the vineyard. Rented it, out, rented it out to vine growers. And went on a journey at the harvest time. And so we, at the, har the harvest is the end of the world, the Bible says. Jesus said. More specifically. The, vine, uh, the vineyard that's... You know, the people of God. Well, the field, I mean, basically, well, it represents the world. So the vineyard would also represent the world, but we had to watch over and take care of. So I guess it would represent the world a little bit more. Because we as people of God, as the, the vineyard workers, are to make sure 
you know, the grapes come forth. And, and matter of fact, in uh, Revelation, the grapes represent those who are going to be crushed. And the same with the olives. I'm, I'm referring specifically to Revelation 17. Where the grapes that are crushed, and th those are... Those are going to be, be the people, you know, and the blood comes forth from, from the grave. So the people in judgment. But but it applies the same with the olives. We are the olives that are crushed and bring forth one, uh, oil, which is the Holy Spirit. But let me just continue reading before I can... Continue explaining. At the harvest time, he sent a slave to the vine growers in order to receive some of the produce of the vineyard from the vine growers. So this, actually, more specifically, like I said, the the vineyard, or the the yeah, the vineyard would represent the house of Israel, the you know the people of God, the Israelites. In order to receive, they sent one of the vine growers in order to receive some of the produce of the vineyard from the vine growers. They took him and beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent another slave. And this is speaking about the prophets who God sent to warn the people of God, to warn the Israelites to repent. Again, he sent to them another slave and they wounded him in the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and that one they killed. And so with many others, beating some and killing others. He had one more to send. A beloved son. He sent him last of all to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those vine growers said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. They took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. Jesus was crucified right outside Jerusalem. What will the owner of the vineyard, the father, do? He will come and destroy the, those vine growers, and he will give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture, the stone which the builders rejected? This became the chief cornerstone. He is our rock. He is the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone. See, see, we are all individual living stones that build up the temple of God. Just, just as, as the same as we are all individual lamps that build up the whole lampstand. We are all individual uh, members of the body of Christ that build up the whole body of Christ. With Christ being the head, the cornerstone. So the stone which the builders, re have you not read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected, this became the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord, from Yahuwah, and it's marvelous in our eyes. And they were seeking to seize him. And yet they feared the people, for they understood that he spoke the parable against them. So they left him and went away, because they feared the people. They weren't fearing God, they were fearing the people. The Pharisees. Then they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to him in order to trap him in a statement. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you're truthful and defer to no one. For you're not partial to any, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay a poll tax to Caesar or not? Shall we pay or sh shall we not pay? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, they were trying to trick him, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, why are you testing me? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was straight up with them. He saw through their schemes, and he was straight up with them. Like, why are you testing me? He said, bring me a denarius to look at. They brought him one. And he said to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. 
And Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, the physical money, but render but to God the things that are God's. And they were amazed at him. They had nothing else to say. They didn't know what to say. Hallelujah. Some Sadducees, parentheses, meaning it wasn't probably in the original translation, says some Sadducees who say that there is no resurrection. And so let me read it without that. Some Sadducees came to Jesus and be began questioning him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves behind a wife and, and leaves no child, his brother should marry the wife and raise up children to his brother. In other words, it wouldn't they would be considered his brother's children instead of his own. And we see a story in the Old Testament about this. And it says he took his uh, brother's wife after he had died. And his name is his name starts with an O, I believe. I, it's, it's slipping my mind right now. But because he knew that, that the kids wouldn't be his, but his brothers, it says he spilled his seed on the ground. He wouldn't get his brother's wife pregnant because it wouldn't have been his kids. It would have been considered his brother's kids who had died. And God struck him dead for not obeying the commandment there. There were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died, leaving no children. The second one married her and died, leaving behind no children. And the third likewise, and so all seven left no children. Last, is all, last of all, the woman died also. And the resurrection of all, or last of all, the woman died also. And the resurrection, when they rise again, which one's wife will she be? For seven, all seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Is this not the reason that you were mistaken? That you do not understand the scriptures or the power of God? He said, You do not under, understand the scriptures. And this is actually very telling. Because I, I've been on the fence about the Apocrypha for a long time. He said, do you, do you not know the scriptures or the power of God? And so, this is an actual story out of the book of Tobit in the Apocrypha. That a woman had a demon messing with her named Asmodeus. And her husband died. Then seven brothers, or six other brothers, married her. But before the marriage was consummated, they all died. Before they were able to have children with her, able to mess with her, you know. This demon Asmodeus killed them all. And this is basically a spirit spouse. I, I don't know if you have... If you're watching this, I don't know if you've heard of that before. But this demon Asmodeus. I've spoken about this before in other videos. was actually in me. I got it brought out of me a month or two ago. It's like one of, one of the top demons of lust. One of the top demons, period. Was in me. Oppressing me. Causing me to lust. Causing me to feel and think crazy things. One of the top demons of lust named Asmodeus. Now you can do your research on demonology and you'll find his name. Was in me. I've done a lot of self-deliverance. I've had somebody else try to cast this out. And wasn't successful. 
you know, and I, I and I've cast out bills above from somebody, bills above Astaroth, like like some of the top demons, Wormwood. This demon named Digden. Demon named, named Lucifer. Out of one of my brothers. But I couldn't get Asmodeus out. Mama saw. And he couldn't get it out. And in this story. In the book of Tobit. Which is what is referenced here. Says the angel Raphael. Not mentioned in the 66 book canon. But the angel Raphael is supposed to be one of the top five. Angels. Like an archangel. I believe. At least potentially. One of the top five angels. If I remember right. Through the through the studies. The angel Raphael. In the book of Tobit. Is actually who brought As Asmodeus out. And one night. I was trying to do deliverance. Trying to get this out of me. Because it, it, it was bad. And I. I got to the point. I just. I was like Lord. If this is what it takes. Send, send, send Raphael. To bring Asmodeus out of me. And right when I said it. I felt the shift. I felt the difference. That demon came out of me. One of the top demons. Came out of me. And matter of fact, I just did a, hopefully my last deliverance ever. The other day, I did self-deliverance, got another lust spirit out of me and, and some other stuff. See, see, believers do, can, I don't, I don't want to say do because not all do. Most do. If you never had deliverance from demons. You probably do. And there's a... Uh, if you haven't heard of it... Coming out in theaters... Next Monday. A week from today. A movie called Come Out in Jesus' Name. A movie in theaters about deliverance. With some... Uh, some... Uh, some strong people of God, some of the main deliverance ministers that are out there. A movie in theaters. In most theaters, it's only going to be one day, next Monday, the 13th, March 13th. If you have a chance, it's been selling out everywhere. But if you have a chance, go and watch that. And I would suggest if you want to go watch it, buy a ticket. Beforehand, before the before the day of the movie, they have it on pre-sale. But I got delivered from that, and even after that, you know, I've had multiple deliverances. I had a lot in me. Even as a believer, I, even even after since being born again, spring of twenty seventeen, I had a lot in me. And we can open doors to allow them back in as well. But I ain't playing this time. After these last ones came into me, or came out of me, I'm not playing around anymore. They can try all they want. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. I'm not playing around anymore. Also mentioned in a recent video, <laughs> That I came across a car accident last week. Where a girl died. Probably younger than me. It can happen like that. We can be gone like that. In an instant. We have to be ready. We have to be right with God. Ain't no playing around with God. The time is short. Or we already know the time is short. We're living in the last days. But we could be gone in an instant. So how are you living your life? Are you living for God? Are you right with Him? Make sure you are. Don't play, don't play around. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you're right with God. This is so serious. But this is where this story comes from. From the book of Tobit, this demon Asmodeus. 
that was tormenting this girl and killed her husband and then seven of her uh, husband's brothers or six of her husband's brothers before the marriage was like fully completed before they consummated it the demon killed them and yeah that can happen demons can cause death demons can cause sickness and we got to realize that we are in a spiritual war our battle is not against flesh and blood but but it's against these spirits and we are also have to realize that there, there are witches and warlocks casting spells spells against us assigning demons doing witchcraft assigning demons to us i would highly suggest watching john ramirez Watch a lot of his stuff. But there are witches and warlocks assigning demons to us, casting demons on us to kill us, to cause, whether it's lust. John Romero said he, he even uh, he got in a fight with his brother, did some witchcraft on him, had him locked up for five years through the witchcraft. He said he's, he's caused cause miscarriages through witchcraft cause death through witchcraft cause sickness through witchcraft this is real we gotta have on the full armor of God and we gotta fight them back we gotta truly have on the full armor of God the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the shield of faith the shoes of the gospel. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's our offensive weapon. The word of God. We have to have on the full armor of God. And fight this spiritual battle. Satan wants to destroy us. Let's fight back against the kingdom of darkness. Let's battle. Let's go to war. Are you a warrior? Or are you a punk? I hope you're a warrior. Because if you're a punk, Satan's going to destroy you. Let's get back to the word. Jesus said to them, Is this not the reason you are mistaken? That you don't understand the scriptures or the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry or are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. So there is no marriage in heaven. We're all going to be children of God. But regarding the fact that the dead rise, rise again, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the burning bush, how God spoke to him saying, I'm the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly mistaken. So in other words, calling those husbands dead spiritually as well. One of the scribes came to him or came and heard them arguing and recognizing that he had answered them well, he, he asked him, what commandments are the foremost of all? The most important commandments. Jesus answered, the foremost of all is and he quoted scripture. He was using the word of God, the sword of the spirit. He said, the foremost of all is, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord, Yahuwah your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your, with all your mind and with all your strength. And how do we display our love for God? That, that's by keeping his commandments, by staying close to him, by staying in his word, by staying in prayer. It's a relationship. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, right, teacher, you have, you have truly stated he is one. 
and there is no one else besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as yourself, as himself, is much more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered, answered intelligently, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Because he wasn't being religious. He wasn't saying we got to do this and that to try to try to be right with God, to try to try to try to try, try to make it into heaven. It's what's in our heart to, to love God and to love our neighbor. And yes, we do have to physically keep commandments to, to be obedient to God, but it's truly what's in our hearts. Jesus began to say, as he taught in the temple, how is it that the scribes say that Christ is the son of David? Or the, the Christ is the, the, the Messiah is the son of David. David himself says in the Holy Spirit, Yahuwah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So in what sense is he, is he his son? And the large crowds enjoyed listening to him. Listening to him. See, he's the son of David, the descendant of David, and also Solomon was a picture of Jesus. And although he was a descendant of David, he was the son of God, and he is Lord. In his teaching, he was saying, Beware of the scribes who like, like to walk around in long robes, and like respectful greetings in the marketplaces, they like to be recognized. And chief seats in the synagogues and places of honor at the banquets. Who devours, who devour widows' houses. In other words, they weren't caring for the widows. And, and James, the brother of Jesus, says true worship is caring for the widows and orphans. And they weren't. It says they devour widows' houses and for appearance sake... Offer long prayers so they'd be seen. Offering long prayers just to be seen. These will receive greater con condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and bega began observing how the people were putting money into the, into the treasury. And many rich people were putting money in large sums. A poor widow came up and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a cent. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you, that this poor woman put more into the put more than all the co contributors to the treasury. She put more more in than everybody else, even though she only put in what equals a penny. Said he, she put in more than everybody. She said, for they all put in out of their surplus. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she owned, all that she had to live on. Are we willing to put all we have to live on into God's kingdom? Into his work? Are, we, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to give it all up? To truly serve God? To truly serve the kingdom? And if even if we weren't in the last days, we are in the last days, but even if we weren't, are you willing? But we are in the last days. We have to be willing to give up everything. Our lifestyle, our money, our life, our things, in order to serve God and His kingdom. In order to bring more people into the kingdom. In order to strengthen the body of Christ. Are you willing? Ask yourself. Think about it. Are you willing to give it all, give it all up? To truly serve Him fully. You have to be willing. You have to. And God isn't necessarily going to tell you to sell all your things and give away all your money. But we need to have that desire so much to build his kingdom 
to bring people to faith, to reach people, to strengthen the body of Christ. We have to have that in our heart. That that is the most important thing. We have to have it in our heart. To be willing to give up everything. And I'm not perfect with this, but but I will take you back. And this is glory to God, not not me. So, but I am just giving an example because I haven't I haven't had a lot of money for a while. But when those COVID checks came in, I don't remember which check it was. Maybe it was both. When the, I'll say when the COVID check came in, even though I had other stuff to spend money on it, other, other stuff I had to take care of. I spent the whole COVID check on Bibles and gospel tracts that dedicated to the kingdom to reach people. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to give it all up? To be honest, I, I, don't, I don't care if I end up, you know, I, I, I tell God, I don't, I, don't, I don't care if I'm, what, whatever you want me to do. Whether you you want me homeless on the streets ministering to people there, or you 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 want to exalt me to 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 reach thousands or millions of people, whatever you want for me, we got to be willing to give it all up, give up our own desires, our own things, in order to serve the gospel, in order to serve Jesus, serve His kingdom. Look at what the apostles did. They, they said, Lord, we, we've given up everything for us, everything for you, everything to follow you. But he will provide us that much more. See, when you give, God gives back. The Bible says when you give to the poor, the Lord will, will repay. I believe that's in Psalms. When you give to the poor, you're giving to God, and He will repay you. So we, we got to be willing to give up everything to follow Him. We got to be willing to carry our cross, meaning willing to give up even our life in order to follow Him and truly serve Him. The time is short. Let's be ready. Let's be right with God. Let's overcome and serve Him with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. Let's be ready. Let's stay in the word. Let's do his will, his will in all things. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. He loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. And if you're willing to truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of Mark 12. Here in the series called The Gospels. Almost done with the book of Mark. We'll be getting into Luke. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.